So, the church is God's purpose in the world. And what we're learning is that each one of us is a part of it, separate but necessary. And the the metaphor of the body is perfect because every one of your body parts is so different, so unique. I mean, a knuckle is nothing like a brain. Makes it good for a knuckle head. But besides that, your knuckle and your and your elbow and your heart and your liver and all these things, they're all so different. And one of the mistakes that we all make in life is we like to get around people that are like us. Is this true? So you join the liver club, you know, and you hang around all the livers. <clears throat> but the problem is you don't get really challenged if you're in the liver club. You just comment on how fatty each other is and how... That's how liver should be. Just relax, all right? And then, and then if, you're in the, if you're in this club, in other words, we want to um, be around people that are like us, but the body teaches us that, no, different is good. Different is good. People have a different opinion. People come from a different background. <clears throat> people have a different way of looking at life. People have completely different skill sets. How many have ever been in a meeting with somebody and you were thinking one thing and then someone else in the meeting spoke up and said something completely the opposite and you thought to yourself, what is that person thinking? Or are they thinking at all? But people have their own perspective. They bring their own ideas to the table. And this is important because this God made you special and unique. So in Ephesians 1, it talks about how the church is God's plan to bring heaven and earth together, to, as we've been teaching over and over again, not for us to leave earth and go to heaven, but to bring heaven to, have you been here, please? Bring heaven to what? Earth. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on, earth. on earth. as it is in heaven. And if, you, if you're into Jesus, I mean, if you're into your own thing, then that's okay. So the church is God's plan to bring heaven to earth. And then he needs individual participants. Each person here. Here's what I'm trying to tell you. You matter. Your part matters. Your part matters in an unbelievably important way. Oftentimes people think, well, pastors, we're talking about the church, a pastor matters. No, pastor is just the mouth. That's it. And without lungs, without a liver, without, right? A mouth is just a mouth. Without a jaw, without a, in other words, all of us play an unbelievably important part. And we do the disservice of favoring certain parts of the body. This past week, I don't know if you saw the news, there were two ladies that were rescued from a boat. They were trying to sail across the Pacific and they got rescued by the U.S. Navy. How many know they were glad for a ship that came their way, right? Think about it. All the positions on a Navy ship, there's guys that hold ropes, there's guys that... That, that work in the engine room, there's engineers, there's, there, there's just countless, countless people all doing individual things in order to save or rescue somebody. The thing that is so important to understand is this. In, in the second chapter of Ephesians, it says this, that you and I are God's masterpiece. You, my friend, are a work of art. Not a piece of work, a work of art. All right? <clears throat> Get it right. All right? You are, a, this is important. You're not perfect because you have, you know, it's selfish, like me, we have selfish desires and tendencies at times that revert us back, that pull us back. Right? Right, right, right. Free confession. Okay, you got it out. Ready? But you're a work of art. 
You're unbelievably unique and special in the way that you look at the world and the way that God's made you. Nobody is like you. And listen to me. Stop trying to be like anybody else. Who cares? There's only one, only one, eternally ever one you. Who cares what this guy did or that gal did or this person did? Be you to the best of your ability. Do you. Can you imagine me trying to be like a regular pastor? You know, could you imagine? No, I mean, I, I did it for a couple of years. I mean, I was just, I felt like David in Saul's armor. I was like, oh, this is terrible. I mean, no, I'm, I'm telling you the truth. I was stressful. You know, it was like, you're supposed to talk a certain way. You're supposed to say, praise the Lord, brother, every other sentence. And I just couldn't do it. It just wasn't me. Nothing wrong with that. If that's you, then do that. I'm here with me. Just do you. And I tell you what, it was so freeing the day that I decided I didn't have to be that. I was so free. Uh, I didn't have to dress a certain way. I didn't have to talk a certain way. I didn't have to act like I liked things that I didn't like. I, I just decided to fully embrace being me. Maybe I struggle with that at times still to this day. And maybe you do too. But here's the thing to think about. There's only one you. God didn't make a mistake when he made you. Stop thinking that way. Stop letting that go through your head that I should just be like this person or if I was just like that person. No, God wanted you to be you. Love yourself. Love the masterpiece, the poem. Ephesians 2.10 that God made. Huh? He sits back and looks at it. Have you ever just done something? Any artists here? Any art? you, you made something, you created something, and you just stood back and said, ah, oh, so good. When God finished making you, he just looked back and he just said, that's so good. That's so good. I want you to look in the mirror tomorrow morning and go, that's so good. Huh? Isn't that the opposite of what most of us do? Uh, 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 uh. We look at our faults, we look at our f- failures, we look at this, we look at that, and we think, oh, no, no, I want you to look at the mirror and go, oh, that was good. Look at the mirror of your heart, say, that's good. What would happen if we believed uh, Ephesians 2, 10, 11, it says this, that we are God's masterpiece created in Christ Jesus to do good. To do good. Look at that God prepared for us to do. Why are you unique? Why are you special? Why does God make only one you? Because he has a job and a purpose that only you can fulfill. And look, to, look here. Don't spiritualize it. Don't go, well, if I'm in church or I'm at a homeless shelter or I'm... You know what I mean by that? You put it into the category of... No. When you do your thing... When you email people, when you, uh, when you take out the trash, when you do whatever that you do that you, you call mundane or ordinary, that is the thing and that is the way in which God is working through you. The big mistake people make is they say, well, the church thing, that's, again, they put it into the category. If it's on Sunday or if it's at the soup kitchen or if it's a missions trip, right? How many know some of you need to take a missions trip across the street to your neighbor? And just do love, just be love. Just, and, and these are the kinds of things that God has put inside of you so that you can fulfill the purpose that he created you to. 